Welcome to my name is Kate. This is my channel Chapter K. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. I had to think for a second. I can't remember what month it was. I don't even know right now what year it is. I don't so today I went and did my photo op for my new passport because they make you change your passport when you get married. That's not fair. I took literally the worst picture I think I've ever taken in my life. Because first of all, the, I sit down on this little stool and the woman goes to the camera and immediately takes it from right here where this one is at a nice almost Spider-Man like angle and lowers it down here to like that angle that your phone's at when you accidentally press your camera and you're like, oh gosh, I didn't know a person could have that many chins. And so I'm just, I went from two because why? So here I am, the most unamused version of myself that has ever existed. I'm just like, but enough about my passport problems at the post office, Ugh, alliteration. Let's get into the wrap up. Yeah. Ugh, I feel so naked about my sleeves. This month I read seven books. All of them were either four or five stars. Did we expect anything else? I just haven't been picking up books that I don't expect to have kind of a high rating at the moment. Um, so that's how it's kind of been. Let's start from the beginning. So the month started off with me being in the middle of Booktubeathon. I really wish it fell on just like one month, but it's like a nice cusp. Readathon. The first book is Marvel's Mania, Depression, Michelangelo, and Me. It is a graphic memoir by Ellen Farney. Forney. It is a graphic memoir by Ellen Forney. And so this is essentially a comic book of her life and her journey with um, mental illness with bipolar disorder. So um, I picked it up because I had heard a couple people talk about it and um, I felt connected to it because I have bipolar disorder and I'm in creative profession and I've done a lot of creative you know hobbies in my life and a lot of people that have bipolar disorder actually are very creative um and she kind of addresses that fear of going on medications and it's squashing your creativity and trying to find a balance and if it's worth it or if it's not worth it things like that and so i felt very connected with her in this and of course i gave it five stars because how are you going to rate someone's journey through their life not to mention I super connected with it. I felt the illustrations were super congruent with what she was discussing at the time. When she talked about being depressed, you could really see the depression. Her art was a lot like this. But when she was, you know, talking about being, you know, feeling manic, her art was like all over the place. And, and you can always sort of tell where she's at by how the how it's drawn and I kind of wanted to show a little bit of like what my art looked like when I was manic and depressed when I used to sketch a lot but I actually couldn't find my sketchbook um I spent like half an hour looking for it but I kind of related because a lot of my sketches when I was manic were all over the place and if I can find a picture I'll put a picture over here if I can't and then a lot of my pictures when I was depressed were very simple it's just like or something like super empty and you can really clearly see the difference between the two so that's why I really really related with this if you want a really in-depth own voices look into bipolar disorder this book would be a great way to do it um, it's very visually um, intriguing and things like that so the next book was How's Moving Castle and this was during the book Tubathon. And this was the book during the book Tubathon that I read and then watched the movie adaptation. It was a Studio Ghibli movie. But this book is by Diana Wynne Jones. Um, I actually, I think I listened to the audiobook of this because there was one and I really loved the woman's voice that was narrating because a lot of times in like these children's books you get, you know, if it's an authoritative narrator, you kind of have always a male voice like in Harry Potter and things like that. So it was really nice to hear a female's voice through a, for a story like this, especially since the primary character, Sophie, was female. So I really loved this book. If you haven't read this book before, um, it's a girl named Sophie. She's a hatter. She makes hats. Her name is Sophie Hatter. She gets cursed by a witch and becomes really, really old and she can't actually tell anybody about the curse. And it also deals a little bit with ageism. She talks about kind of the, the struggles that she goes through. Um, in her body feeling older but it shows that she's capable in what she does and her intelligence things like that and it sort of shows how people treat you differently you know with your age um which i find to be very interesting because in a lot of children's stories there is some ageism especially like in older fairy tales there's always the old crone who's evil and things like that so this was really cool um and if you haven't you know read it before Hal is like a he's a wizard um he does a lot of wizardy things but he's very self-centered the movie he's voiced by christian bale um, and there's a talking fire, which is really cool. So, my favorite character is Calcifer. 
gave this book five stars because it's a great amazing children's story for the age group that it's you know intended it is amazing it's a well thought out and i can enjoy it at my age so i definitely think that's a recipe for a five star middle grade book next is siege and storm by lee bardugo um i kind of went back and forth with the rating on this one um between five and four i gave it a five um at first but then i kind of lowered it to a four because um there are some things that i feel like could have been developed a little bit more like the power system which she did you know have a lot of cool powers in this book if you're familiar with the series um but i feel like there could have been more interesting things done with it if you haven't read the series i don't want to go too much into it because this is a sequel it's not the um you know the initial book in the series but it's essentially um follows a um, protagonist named Alina and she has kind of light power she can manipulate light in different ways and things like that which I thought was really cool because in a lot of things I like to write I like to do a lot with like light magic and talking about light and dark and things like that and dualities and so I thought that was really cool I like a lot of the elements that are introduced in this book um I don't know but it wasn't you know it wasn't mind-blowing it wasn't there was a lot more with irritation there's a trope i don't like in here where like there's a kind of a best friend or a you know romantic couple that all of a sudden they're mad at each other over something stupid or something that's just a misunderstanding or a miscommunication even though they should communicate openly if they've known each other forever but they don't and something you know if they let it interfere and i hate that trope but i think that might have been why it cost a star so that i have the third i just haven't started it because i'm all over the place Next, the next book I read was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Gilman. Um, I was not expecting it to be this small. This book is 26 pages long. Oh, that's with 24 pages long. Um, it's a classic and it shows a little bit about how they um, treated women dealing with mental illness a long time ago. Um, I don't know. I, I can't exactly remember what time period this is. I think it's the 20s, but I'm not super sure the formatting of this is really really weird um but that's because i feel like they just kind of grabbed it off of the um like a kind of public domain site um but like every at the end of every sentence it um enters down so that was really annoying i wasn't really expecting it to have like a sort of horror twist to it and some things that you know you have to dig a little deeper into and I enjoyed that aspect of it um and I enjoyed her obsession with the wallpaper and she kept going back to the wallpaper um and this was my classic for the month and I feel like for a classic it was very readable and I enjoyed that a lot um it was just really really short and I feel like there could have been a lot more put into it um and I feel like the formatting annoyed me um but it is a really really good book and I feel like it's something that everyone should look into if you are interested in the way mental illness is portrayed in books and if you're trying to get into more classics it's definitely a go-to so the camera died i hope this is still in focus i can't really tell because my eyes are bad where were we okay the next book i read five stars was an unkindness of magician by cat howard um this is an amazing book i got it because it was gorgeous and i had a little blurb on neil game and it sounded interesting i had no idea what it was about title sounded cool i liked the aesthetic so i was like it's probably good and it was it was great it was amazing i have a review so i'm not going to talk about it i'll just link it there yes next is paperweight oh lord it's got a lot of crinklies over here paperweight was the green ribbon book club book of the month and it is a book about eating disorders the main character stevie has bulimia and she goes to a treatment center um the entire time she's sort of planning on killing herself there are a lot of trigger warnings in this book um a lot of people have found it to be very triggering if it is a an issue that you deal with um it really depends on what your triggers are and you know how you're affected by reading things so just be careful be aware of that if you decide to pursue this book um it's by meg hey has to i don't know when this is going up but there's going to be a live show about this on my channel and i'm going to be talking about it with my bestie marina ray and also sarah from serendipity so novel serendipity <laughs> they're both really awesome they both have great opinions so um they're gonna be talking with me about this book um so i'm not gonna go a lot into that i'll just talk about it on my live show so my rating for this book changed 
consistently. At first I was like, it's probably going to be like a two star book. Um, and then it was a four and then it was a five and now it's a four. So it went all over the place, but it landed on a four star for me. Um, I think that the representation, it was hard to, to, to separate the quality of the book from the protagonist who was very unlikable in my opinion. Um, but that doesn't mean that her story didn't need to be told and that doesn't mean that people dealing with certain mental illness do not experience those days where they are unlikable and that their personality gets the better of them. Um, so I think it's important to tell all stories and I, if I could separate myself from the situation, from the protagonist, from the triggering kind of nature of this book. Um, I was kind of more able to look at it in a more objective way and in forms of representation I do feel like this gave a couple of different um, viewpoints of eating disorders. So I will say eating disorders are, are not something that I personally deal with so I don't have that experience. I have experienced disordered eating at one point in my life but it wasn't to the point where it was a disorder. I would like to hear, you know, the opinions of people who have been through that or, you know, on voices, reviews of that. I know Emma Books has actually talked about this in a couple of her mental illness recommendation videos. Um, and she talks openly also about dealing with eating disorder. Um, so if you do want an own voices review of that, I would suggest that. And um, there are a couple of others that if I can find them, I will link them as well below. Next was Sword of Destiny. This was an audiobook. It is a book of short stories in the Witcher universe. Um, and it's by Andre Sokowski. And um, this is actually a, was originally written in Polish and this is a translation. Um, a lot of people know it from the video games. Um, in the Witcher series, there are two sort of prequels to the series and this is the second prequel. I read the first one already um, before you get to the actual novels. I really enjoyed this. The short stories were all sort of based on fairy tales but very loosely um, within the Witcher universe. I don't remember if I gave it a five or a four star review. It kind of a 4.5. For me because it wasn't like um i did find myself sort of zoning out as i read it but i did really like it i really really love the characters i love the universe i love the way things work and the different species and things like that in the universe um but it was around a 4.5 for me because i guess i don't know if it was because of the short stories that they weren't able to kind of capture me or what but it was it wasn't you know fully there for me but i really did enjoy it and i'm actually really enjoying first book which I'll talk about in a little bit and that is actually all of the books that I read in August it's not a lot it's only seven -ish. one two three four five yes seven I think I already said that I don't know so that was all seven books that I read overall the enjoyment level of the books I read was pretty high um and I it was great so now to the books that I am currently reading which include Blood of Elves and this is the first book that's actually in the Witcher series that's a full you know novel not short stories um so far I'm really enjoying it um I'm listening to it in the audiobook I'm about 40 or 45 percent of the way through then I'm also reading Vicious by <laughs> you're naked then I'm reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab um so far I really 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 love this book um it is I feel a little bit triggering um because there are um there are mentions of self-harm and suicide in this book. It's done in like a sort of scientific way. It's not done um, in a way that is necessarily associated with, you know, depression or um, thoughts of killing themselves. But um, it's, you'll see when you read it. Um, however, I, I, I would recommend, you know, just being careful and being aware of that if you're going into this book and you have that as a trigger. Um, self-harm is a trigger of mine. So I found that, you know, that I, I had to me a little bit to get through. It was a little bit harder to get through um, because of that. Um, but I'm a little over halfway, actually this is, I'm a little under halfway, because this is upside down, through the book. And I really like all the characters so far. Um, I'm finding that there are a lot of parallels to some things that I'm not going to say because I might do a review on this. So, but it's by V.E. Schwab. She's great. I love her. I want her to be my mom or something, or aunt or sister, being my family or something. And I'm also currently reading... <laughs> Freaks Alive on the Inside by Annette Curtis Klaus. I already talked about this in a used book haul I did, which I'll link probably. Oh no, there went the bookmark. And in that book also, which I didn't mention, he has some girl that keeps coming to him in his dreams, but I barely get into it, so. Um, and also Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. So far, I've only read a little teeny bit of it, but the... Oh no, my accent came out. Oh. I've only read a little teeny bit of it, but... I, her writing, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I am all for some pretty writing. I know some people aren't for the purple prose, 
but occasionally I want to just be addicted and get through all the plot and the action and sometimes I just want to marinate in the words and this is definitely one of those opportunities to just marinate in the work. That's all for this wrap up. So if you'd like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye. Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night. I feel the soldiers coming, I'm pulling up a fight.